you know, when I saw the preview for this a couple months ago, I knew we would eventually have to do an episode on this. I was speaking, of course, about Jack Ryan season two, the Amazon television program based on the works of Tom Clancy starring Office Jim as CIA agent Jack Ryan. Uh, for the purposes of this analysis, I will only re be referring to characters on this show by their names from... Uh, uh, I will, for the purposes of this analyst... Uh, sorry. For the purpose Go to Joe3030.com. <laughs> for, for the purpose of this uh, episode, I will only be referring to characters based on their names uh, of their characters on other TV shows. So right. Office Jim, that is Jack Ryan. I'll call him Office Jack, maybe. But... Um, it's interesting because just this week we saw a whole bunch of clips promoting the show from Office Jim uh, where he said things like... Um, obviously, I knew that they had dedicated their lives to the idea of the agency, but when you actually meet them, these people are uh, a much more diverse group than you would imagine, a much more apolitical group than you would imagine, which is really refreshing. I think the idea of caring about the country in a bigger, more idealistic way rather than a political way. I just thought it was really important to do a show that could you know demonstrate to everyone like how apolitical heroic and admirable cia agents are yes he said that if people knew what the cia does for them they would be thanking them every day <laughs> so let's get another color for the flag for for uh, spook lives matter but the other interesting thing about the office gym connection to this um i don't know how should i put this um nauseating propaganda for our imperial state is that were it not for this utter dolt there might not be a Chapo Trap House. That's true. Yeah, yeah, we no, owe a lot yeah. to uh, the weird uh, like operator career turn that Office Jim took after being on that show. It, that's was, right. After after uh, John Krasinski's uh, star turn as Office Jim, we were all hired as food tasters for him. And that's how we met. <laughs> and we bonded over a similar interest in politics. <laughs> But yes, it was uh, reviewing his, the, his the movie he made with Michael Bay about the Benghazi uh, soldiers who were uh, betrayed by Bar Barsacco Crumbo and Killary uh, Clintoon. Uh, <laughs> that was the genesis. That was, yeah. that was like and the, uh, the I, I the guess monolith. what happened with, with him is he, he wanted to not be... He, uh, he didn't want to be typecast as a, as a goofy office guy. No, he wanted well, to... So. Yeah. He's an interesting case study, John Krasinski. He's like a Chris Pratt type because it's very similar. Right, they're, yeah, they're, NBC a, sitcom where they're like an affable, goofy kind of punchy guy. Right, and then they get roided out and become operators. Well, right, I think it's like the actor version. Look, we've met this guy. He's like a nerdy Jewish guy who doesn't go to movie theaters anymore because he was eating beans while watching Cars <laughs> Two. <laughs> Some black teenagers noticed it and made a fool out of him. Uh, and he's become a huge Zionist because, like, just he needs like an established tough brand to be tough by proxy through. And in his imagination, like if he was a cool IDF guy, he could eat as many beans as he want. No one would <laughs> laugh at him. Uh, that this is the Hollywood version of that because like these guys were. I mean, Virgil, you're a fellow scholar of uh, Imager. As, as oh I yeah, am. yeah, yeah. These guys starred in most Imager memes. Like if there was a meme that was like. I just found out that the boss who I fixed CSS for does not even know uh, Python. And then it'd be like, you know, Jim or Chris Pratt making a face. I just found out the nerdy busty girl down the hallway uh, is wants to do a Vampire Hunter D cosplay with me for the Halloween. Uh, you know, and it'd be like Chris Pratt doing the soy face. But both those guys... Uh, I have committed for the rest of their lives playing war criminals that Donald Trump will pardon. Now, yeah, like I said, the uh, the Office Jim Michael Bay Benghazi movie was like the monolith that me, Matt, and Felix like sort of uh, you know uh, congregated around and touched it, and then from that you know came the Chapo yep. uh, Space Odyssey, and you know all of humanity really. Yeah. So, um, but uh, you know, like I, I guess like. The other interesting thing about this experiment here is that we have we have uh, you know obviously I cannot commit to watching all of this this TV show. So we, we have divided it up in such a way that we're going to do basically like a game of like like a like a like a relay race to describe to you like a good chunk of what actually happens on uh, Jack Ryan season two, the Venezuelan stratagem. So you know I mean like when the, when the uh, ads for this TV show came out. I like it was uh, my jaw was on the ground. 
happened in nuclear Venezuela, you will not hear about in the news because we'll already be dead. Because like, obviously, Jack Ryan season one, it was like, if it, it, it basically like this show is like if the Decker TV series had a budget and like slightly more intelligent writing, but the exact same point of view, like that's what this show would be. I just did a little cursory research on it. Season one was about um, a Muslimic style terrorist named Suleiman who wanted to unite um, Hezbollah and Al Qaeda to do dirty bomb attacks in America. And like Jack Ryan was just like a nerdy analyst who like goes into the ops. He goes into the field and like, you know, he, he has a big success by stopping. I'll, I'm stopping your terrorist attack, Suleiman. <laughs> there was a B, there was a B plot where Jack Ryan kept having to take the president to the hospital to get his stomach his stomach pump because he swallowed too much cum while praying Islamically to a man's dick. I have not seen any of season one, so like we've done this in such a way that it's going to be like a relay race. Like I am actually the only one who has anything like close to a coherent understanding of the plot of this show because I watched the first episode. And we've divided it up where like each of us has watched one episode. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to kick it off. Basically like, the least coherent way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm going to kick it out. Like I'm the linchpin here that like I will fill in for you. Like hopefully the, the, the puzzle piece that will fit in to like help you understand what's actually going on. You're the, the only one who's seen a complete narrative. Product. Yeah, exactly. Let's just let's just dive into this. And I'm like, having not seen season one. This is episode one. This is my uh, summary review of episode one. Season two of Jack Ryan, uh, the Caracas Connection. Okay, so it opens, and um, uh, I, just real quick though, uh, the opening credit title sequence of this show is very interesting because it basically sort of uh, juxtaposes pleasant um, Americana images, and then like ha- like sort of morphs them into like dangerous, scary things. Like there's at one scene, there's like a baseball and then like the other half of the screen it turns into a hand grenade I, I'm obsessed with the opening sequence of this because I think it is peak like the example of what a dumb person is, would think was smart because it's every shot is like what if Congress was a gun yeah well, yeah, well it's <laughs> That's, what if stocks were the mountains of Afghanistan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's like that's like Tom Clancy's specialty. Yeah, like Tom Clancy's specialty is that like a bunch of cool emotionless operators are just out there in the world protecting Americans doing the stupid bullshit they do that doesn't matter. Like he has pure contempt for just like what uh, supposedly like the freedom that his cool operators (laughs) are defending. (laughs) Like that was the first commercial for Splinter Cell was just an idiot, stupid, weak child saying like a good night prayer (laughs) while Sam Fisher kills people. (laughs) Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, well, that was like very early mid two thousands where it was like, Yo, what if there was a child saying a prayer while there was like a fucking gunfight? It's like, now that would be I a crazy juxtaposition. Sleep, and then somebody's getting garroted. Yeah, behind Sam, them. Sam Fisher just snaps a guy's neck. Yes. That was like high art in 2004. Okay, so uh, that, that's the odd uh, opening credit sequence. But okay, the show begins, uh, brrr, like the text spits out on the bottom of the screen, South China Sea. It's like, you know, a fishing boat, like a, like a dad and his son, you know, just like simple, simple fisher people in the South China Sea. In the distance, explosion is heard, and what appears to be some sort of missile launch is happening from a like giant container ship in the middle of the ocean. Cut from there to we are now 24 hours later in Moscow, and uh, Detective Bunk Moreland, again, that's the name of his character as far as I'm concerned, Detective Bunk Moreland is a uh, CIA guy um, you know, on an op in Moscow meeting up with a, uh, like a source right, or an asset of the CIA. Um, in a hotel room who's like a, a Russian general who he's like debriefing or whatever, but he's also being uh, tailed by two people. And this is like the first thing I noticed about the show is that I don't think the CIA would use a black guy um, to do field ops in Moscow, which is probably the most conspicuous thing imaginable. No, that, that's how you get under the radar by doing something that's so obvious that no one would do it. See? Okay. Fair enough. So he, uh, he he meets with a Russian general to ask him about the uh, the missile launch, which apparently was not a missile launch, but in fact like a rocket that has now put an unregistered satellite into geosynchronous orbit above Venezuela. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, then he has a heart attack. <laughs> um, don't know what that was really about. I thought he was like sweating and huffing, and I thought we were going to find out he was poisoned by polonium, but no, it's just heart disease. Weird. Okay. 
Um, the first okay. Russian ever to just die from a heart attack <laughs> and not crashing his car directly into a fuel tanker <laughs> or swallowing nails. No. He got a medal for it. So there's um, an unregistered rocket launch to put a satellite into orbit over Venezuela. And also there's the implication that uh, Russia is moving um, something like like super missiles into oh, Venezuela. Shit. Okay. Oh, not super missiles. I hate it. No, dude. It's like... A regular missile, I can maybe deal with that. A super missile, well, day, day's ruined. Great. Sun's crying. Thank you. Okay. Cut from Moscow to Office Jack. He is, you know, at the front of a big, like a, a lecture auditorium, and he's giving a just like a whole uh, auditorium full of students a PowerPoint lecture that is, in my opinion, easily the funniest thing that happened on this show. So... He's at, like he has this big PowerPoint presentation where he shows them like a like a montage of news, you know, uh, packages about like how dangerous the world is today vis-a-vis -vis North Korea, Russia, China, terrorism, all these threats. And he goes, OK, that's the news. What is the lens you view the news through? That is always the most important question. Then he just like asks for a show of hands. Like, hey, just shout out. Who do you think? What do you think is the biggest threat? And people are just like hands go up. Oh, uh, Russia. Goes, oh, Russia? Okay, cool. So I'm like, uh, how about now I'm in North Korea? And he's like, all right, North Korea? That's a good answer. And then he just goes on like that, and he's like sort of a cool professor. He's sort of like riffing with his students. Then he's like, okay, got some interesting answers, but um, I noticed none of you said uh, Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're not <laughs> morons. None of you are stupid. <laughs> and then um, he goes on to say that the greatest threat to the world today is actually not China, Russia, or North Korea, but Venezuela. And then goes on to say it explicitly, again, not imply it, but explicitly in this lecture that Venezuela is the greatest threat to the world today because of their richness in natural resources, whether it's oil, gold, or other mineral deposits. Then he starts talking about how there is a, uh, the Venezuelan leader who has uh, sort of ridden to power on a tide of nationalist fervor has uh, in six years cratered their economy. Mm. And now running against him, is a woman who is a history professor turned activist who he says, and I'm not, I'm, this is a quote, running on a social justice platform or, as Jack Ryan describes it, just not being an asshole. <laughs> so there, there, is a, there is a cool professor turned social justice warrior who is running an upstart populist pr political campaign against the, like, Hugo Chavez Maduro figure who is this, you know, like, evil tyrant. Mm. Played, I believe, uh, by Johnny Tapia from Bad Boys Two. <laughs> yes, so, you're right, you're right. That's always a good uh, a good sign. Um, and then at, at the end of the lecture, uh, Jack Ryan says, "Like you know, imagine a state, you know, that rich in oil and gold and minerals, becoming a failed state." And he's like, "What's a failed state?" Just think of Iraq, Syria, or Yemen. And again, he's a CIA agent, so he's just saying like, hey. Iraq, was... Syria, and Yemen, dust off hands. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what happened to them. Yeah. Very unfortunate. <laughs> you hate to Boy, see it happen. Can you imagine what would happen if we got involved in Venezuela the way that we did in those countries? <laughs> and then like, uh, he basically just goes like, you won't hear about any of this. Like, He just spits knowledge and just facts about Venezuela. Women aren't supposed to have their period. <laughs> Professor, what are you talking about? <laughs> they adopt an alkaline diet. They'll yeah, find that. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, General Muck Muck walks <laughs> the devils back to what we call Turkey today. Are you, aren't you supposed to be a CIA analyst? Well, I'm trying to, if General Muck Muck is alive in Venezuela, we need to contact him to defeat the whites. CIA Jim uh, spits all these facts about how Venezuela is the most dangerous country in the world. And he just says all these facts, you know, you won't read about it in the papers because like they don't want you, like they, I guess, don't want you to know how scary Venezuela is. And also, most importantly, that it's in our backyard. Okay. But basically, Jack Ryan is a cool, nice guy. Is what this implies. He's like he's, yeah. like, he's like the college professor. The girls have a crush on, and the guys look up to and kind of want to like you know admire and be like. I will also note that the dialogue on this show that isn't like about you know ops and like facts is incredibly how shall I describe it? Joss Whedon esque. Oh yeah, and that they really try to make like they kind of like these CIA guys seem like just sort of like adorable, like Ugh. pop culture, like sort of, you know, doing uh, soy banter. Ba ban yeah. Soy banter. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Turning my dead drop into socially awkward penguin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I uh, stabbed a, a human rights activist with a fucking rice and tipped dart at the end of my umbrella. So that happened. 
blowing up the reporter who exposed the Panama Papers like a boss, like an epic sir. Uh, yes, Reddit, I am no longer a virgin. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> so uh, then, like, you know, he gets uh, some info about the satellite photos, and he's like, you know, there's a, a container ship that's registered through Cyprus that the Russians used to, like, move weapons, and it showed up in a port in Caracas. And he's like, okay, the Russians are secretly selling weapons to Venezuela, which is another weird thing for this show to be about, because Russia has been openly selling Venezuela weapons for, like, Years They've been now. openly selling them rockets. They're secretly selling them super rockets. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, we didn't agree to super rockets. So then there's a scene where him and his boss, who he's now like a legislative aide to a senator, who is David Acevedo from The Shield, who is a is a U.S. senator who grew up in Venezuela, but then moved to Miami. Wink, wink. Read, yeah. you know, right wing, uh, yeah. land owning family, yeah, and is now Gisano. probably a Republican senator who's concerned about Venezuela. And Jack Ryan is his fax boy. And they go to a President Davison character and they're like, here's, here's, the, here's the intel. We've got it. The Russians are moving weapons. And the guy's just like, well, 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 I, well I don't know. I mean, well, let's, not, let's, not just, let's not just go crazy here, dude. Decker. Let's have a beer summit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he literally says, why don't we try diplomacy first? And he sends uh, David Aceveda and CIA Jim to Caracas on an official diplomatic met, like uh, mission to meet with the evil president of Venezuela and be like, um, so about that thing, uh, are you guys like maybe buying super weapons from Russia? Because, uh, okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> um, all right. After that, uh, we go back to uh, Russia and Bunk Moreland gets chewed out by another President Davison character played by character actor Frank Whaley, who's mad that he had a heart attack. And he's like, God damn it, Bunk. You can't be having heart attacks when you're in the field. And he's like, fuck you, son. I'm the best goddamn CIA agent you've got. And then like, then he gets information that the, the satellite launch is also linked to Venezuela. And then he's like, fuck this. I'm requesting a transfer. Caracas desk. And they're like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so basically they all converge in uh, Venezuela. Um, David Aceveda and Jack, uh, Jack Office uh, go to Venezuela and immediately they, they get at the airport and they're like, you know, driving in in their SUV convoy. And of course they see, you know, food lines and, you know, poverty. And someone says to the ambassador says to David Aceveda, this is not the Venezuela of your youth. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I've heard. Uh, the, in this show, the entirety of Venezuela appears to be made out of shipping containers. <laughs> <laughs> um, then they go to meet with the uh, evil president of Venezuela and like his number two guy who's like a general who was played by a guy who played one of the Cali cartel bosses in yeah. Ghost season three. He was very good on that show. I like that guy. He was like the main Cali boss in yeah, season yeah. three of Narcos. He was, I was, he was good. I remembered him from um, and then, like, so uh, the, the Venezuelan president, like, they, they show them the evidence, and they're like, you know, you know, if you're doing this, you got a problem with America, buddy. And the guy coats them off and just is like, you know, I don't know anything about this. He just big dicks them and lies to them. And, like, as, as they're leaving, uh, the pre evil Venezuelan president says to David Aceveda in Spanish, he says, you know, just because you think, just because you grew up here doesn't mean that you're a real Venezuelan like I am. And then Aceveda says to him also in Spanish, he's like, that's fine, just as long as you don't pretend that you really represent the will of the people. <laughs> then, I'll snap. Then, he go, then he goes back and he's like, all right, we're done with this meeting. I have to go push the hyperinflation button because I hate my people <laughs> and I'm evil. Time to go serve my people rats, my favorite thing to do. <laughs> uh, I think I'll go take all the brands out of the supermarket. <laughs> I hate it when consumers have choices. <laughs> okay, so uh, from then... Uh, we meet we're, a new character is introduced who is, of course, uh, Jacques, Jacques and Hagar from Game of Thrones, also playing an assassin in this show. And he is given a, a contract to of like two people. You know, we don't know who they are, but he's like, OK, I'm accepting the mission. He's a bad guy. And he needs like he needs someone on the inside, someone on the security detail to do this, do this mission. That's all we see of that. Um, then um, the girl with the dragon tattoo shows up in the hotel bar looking cute. Jack Ryan makes flirty eyes at him, at her, before uh, going for an authentic Venezuelan dinner with David Aceveda and Detective Bunk Moreland, who just showed up. And he's like, hey, guys. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's you. And they're like, oh, come on. I'm going to take you to get some real authentic arepas. And then they go to, like, you know, some little beggar child, like, tap dances for, yeah. for Office Ryan. 
And I want like, to go get my MBA, <laughs> but the president keeps pushing the hyperinflation button. I can't afford to go to the University of Miami. I wish the CIA would save me. Yeah. Here's your perfect arepas. <laughs> so they have an authentic uh, Venezuelan experience, you know, with the real people who are being abused by this evil president and his and his hyperinflation. It's also implied that the uh, the social justice warrior political campaign that's like. They, they, like in the, in the presidential palace, there's a scene where the generals like, have you seen these polls? Like she's doing even better than we thought. Like she could win. And then it's implied that she's a leftist and well, like that they are like pseudo right wing or something, which is very odd. Uh, she, the, well, the it's like of, Guadito says he's like a, he's a socialist. Yeah, it's like a, it's a nice sleight of hand that they're doing yeah, here. It's like, like he's the, doing it wrong because I think our under- guy wants to do it right. Because I think they understand the sympathies of like where the average viewer for this show is going to lie. Like who just like someone who doesn't really know enough, but like has a general kind of like liberal point of view. Um, and like this is interesting about the show, like the the way that they've created Jack Ryan as like the the funny, cool college professor who also does ops for the CIA is very much like why I think Pete Buttigieg is in the CIA because like if they are behind this TV show and Pete Buttigieg himself as a candidate, this is it like as we've seen in him and this TV show exactly how they're selling themselves. Oh yeah. Which is just like fun, young. We have a beard, you know, we're cool. Tengo yeah. socially un, aware. Tengo un, un opero grande estructural. <laughs> <laughs> That's the woman candidate says. So um, there's some backstory with uh, the senator and and Office Ryan, where it turns out that he was his command. Like, despite the fact that he's a, a, a dork, he was also like an army ranger in Afghanistan. Well, of course. And and David Acevedo was his commanding officer who like saved him from a helicopter crash and then visited him in the hospital every day for three months while he got back surgery. <laughs> it's, I, I'm very odd. Don't get it. Well, they're um, trying to make you care yeah. uh, for what happens next. So, and then like they're, they're and then uh, office office Ryan, uh, uh, CIA Jim goes back to the hotel, splits off from the two other guys after Bunk Morland's like, "You still got a lot to learn about being a CIA officer, son. You still don't know shit." And then he goes ahead and proves that by um, breaking off from them, getting a drink for Girl with the Dragon Tattoo at the hotel bar. And then, like, she just goes to this hotel room and he's like, oh, boy, oh, boy, I'm going to score. <laughs> and then, like, obviously she's a honeypot. And as soon as he's, like, you know, nutted and passed out, she <laughs> bugs his hotel room and takes pictures of all his precious op intel. Oh, no. And he's like, what a oh. crappy agent. He's like, oh, wow, this hot girl totally likes me. Uh- uh, oh, I've got I've got a big dead drop interception for you guys. I scored with a ten out of ten, perfect, perfect lady. So, um, okay, so I'm getting to the very end of the episode. Basically, the Jacques and Higar plot comes in, and there's a scene where he buys a trinket from some poor old lady on the street and gives her ten American dollars, and she just starts like crying. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, oh, and- <laughs> so, and then like he gets a he gets an inside guy who's like a police captain on their security detail. But uh, again, we don't really know who hired him, but the episode ends with their SUV. They're leaving to go back to America. Um, CIA Jim and the U- sitting U.S. senator <laughs> and the U.S. ambassador to Venezuela. Their SUV convoy is just going to the airport to go home. They're like, time to go back to Washington and report on this, on this information. They are fucking attacked with like, I like bombs that are planted like cell phone bombs that are planted like under concrete that they like they're stopped in a thing and then just sprayed with machine gun fire and the episode ends with Jacques and Hagar with car bombs and a fucking sniper rifle assassinating a sitting US senator <laughs> on Venezuelan soil. Yeah. We need you to do this as covertly. We need you we need look these are big targets, you know, maybe look make it look like an accident that they both tripped on sniper bullets <laughs> or exploded. It's like their whole convoy just gets blown the fuck up. And then like off, uh, off a CIA gym almost saves Senator David Aceveda. And he's like, go Jack, go. And he like, he gets out of the car and he's like reaching for him. Then it's like, psh, 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 just pop, 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 just aired out by a sniper rifle. It was the only entertaining part of the show. It was the only time I was like really rooting for someone. <laughs> um, and then the episode ends with, um, uh, CIA Jim has to call home because he's like very close to this guy and his family and he has to call the guy's wife and be like, she's like, hello, hello, Jack, is that you? How, how, how's my husband? And he's just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, he posted cringe and lost all subscribers. He's been owned permanently. So yes, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the end of the episode. Is his wife Pam? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, your husband has been old. He's <laughs> fucking dead. He's been killed by the Venezuelan military in their own country. A sitting U.S. senator. So yeah, yeah that's fucking old. Uh, so Venezuela. Uh, what I learned from the first episode: Venezuela is the most dangerous country in the world. Um, it's the greatest humanitarian crisis in the world. If they got a nuclear weapon, we wouldn't know about it because we'd already be dead. Not only would they preemptively attack America with nuclear weapons. By the end of the episode, we learned that they will assassinate a U.S. senator in Caracas in broad daylight. Oh, boy, that's not good. Yeah, no, that's, that's how they get you. So that's episode one. Who did Jack that? Ryan was in, um, there was a character in Hunt for Red October, yes. right? Yes, yes. And yeah. Clear and Present Danger, played uh, by Alec Baldwin, Harrison Alec Ford, Baldwin, most yeah. famously, in Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger, and then Ben Affleck in Some of All Fears. Yes. And did so did Office Jim play Jack Ryan in the first season of the show? Was yes. It? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris Pine played him in an attempt oh, to do yes. a reboot You're of right, the Jack Ryan did. character yes. for cinemas that that failed, and then they but these are all these are all original stories. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think these are based on any Tom Clancy novel. This is not based on. I would like to say these are all these are all ripped from the headlines. You know, this is like a class on geopolitics. What's going on today? I would like to say for the record though that. Red October, Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger, all whip at the South. Oh, Red yeah, October is yeah. fucking absolutely slay. They're one thing only. Jack. Splinter Cell, one of the greatest series of games of all time. Rainbow Six, probably right now, the best. The the best FPS you can play. So I'm kind of shocked that the Tom Clancy, the good Tom Clancy name has been slapped on what <laughs> seems to be an inferior product. I would Not up to the Tom Clancy standards that you know, the Tom Clancy label that we as consumers look for. I, I believe that the Tom Clancy label is one of those like baseball hats of an aircraft carrier worn <laughs> yeah. by an old fat guy with mirrored sunglasses <laughs> who's Cl- never been in the military. I believe there is a Tom Clancy AI that's writing all of these. <laughs> okay, who did episode two? I want to see where this goes. Uh, I did episode okay. two. Were we supposed to take notes? Because I didn't take notes. I well, took I, a I, single note that I will reveal okay, later. Okay. <laughs> I think we, this will go faster and faster as this goes yeah, on. Yeah. It becomes more and more un- incomprehensible. Okay, so episode two owned, uh, opens with um, the police officer who I gather led the convoy astray. Oh, his whole family gets murdered. Yes. Yeah. Coming directly from his family getting murdered to this American embassy and saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, refuge, refuge, asylum, uh, getting taken in and getting taken back to an interrogation uh, chamber where he basically says, you know, I want to confess in return for amnesty. And boy, is Office Jack not having any of that. He is fucking pissed off that his good friend, uh, Senator Jimmy, uh, got got and he does the bad cop routine to the best of his uh, ability. And it's, you know, this this cop going like, please give me amnesty for my for my mother, too. She is very sick. I needed the three thousand dollars to care for her. And (laughs) Jack is like, you shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up and tell me about the senator. Uh, And uh, I would say a moderately convincing tough guy performance from uh, Jim. Uh, Office Jim immediately knows, knows, knows that this is, that Reyes ordered uh, President Reyes ordered the hit, the president of Af- Afghanistan, and he is out to <laughs> Afghanistan. The president of Venezuela, well, uh, literally sub in. It, 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 it would not, it would not matter. Hugo Chavez, uh, yeah, we'll just Hugo, call Chavez. Him Hugo, Hugo Chavez, Chavez no, ordered no. the ordered the hit, and is on his way to figure it out. Uh, meanwhile, in the jungle, some gorillas get ambushed by some operators. Okay, uh, it cuts to Tampa, where some. A uh, guy is repairing boats, scuba repairing boats for rich people and tries to get recruited to, quote, pilot a flat a, a flat bottom boat up the rivers. I know you're good at this by some guy he used to work with. Not clear what this is. Back in Caracas, uh, Office Jim casually infiltrates a boat by just seemingly driving up to the port of Caracas, walking into it, just lifting a little yellow vest and putting on a hard hat and walking into a boat to get information. Uh, this boat is the Renata. I gather the boat from the beginning. The Almeida. The Almeida. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. He goes into the hull of this boat, looks at some documents, and immediately some guy behind him is like, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing?" And pulls a gun, or not pulls a gun, is about to pull a gun when the girl from with the dragon tattoo shows up and is like, "Oh, the, this is uh, my friend. He gets very lost. Remember, we had to on the the coffee and is about to carry him off the boat when the the thug pulls guns on them and she expertly." Disarms him and kicks his ass. Outside, cool. uh, uh, Jim's like, hey, 
no, no lies now. Who are you? And she says she's Lee Klein, former KSK, now privately tracking a former businessman who's been selling arms to Reyes or to Hugo Chavez, but then got kidnapped by him. She gives Jim some information, which is an audio tape of Hugo Chavez's second in command uh, saying, yo, he's blinded by power. Uh, the woman is doing better in the polls than him. He doesn't know what to do. He's dangerous when he's backed into a wall. Uh, they use this te- this tape to uh, basically they give it to um, to Reyes as second in command, the uh, Cali cartel boss, the Cali yeah. cartel boss, uh, who's his chief of security, who they're g- is going to use it to put pressure on Ubari, the second in command guy, uh, to try to flip him and turn in Reyes. All of this is very complicated and very boring. Uh, later. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is forced to reveal that she is not, in fact, Lee Klein, but, in fact, Harriet Browman. Uh, oh, what? A BND agent. Uh, and she's looking for Max Schenkel. <laughs> big natural dick. A big, a big natural dick. <laughs> I love those big floppy naturals. Uh, a BND. That's the German secret police. Yeah, the German okay. secret police. Okay. She's looking for her former colleague who betrayed her, who also, I believe, set up was instrumental in setting up the hit. On uh, on is this Jacques and Higar? Yeah, Jacques yeah, and Higar. Okay, yeah. I think excellent. They go to confront Hugo Chavez and basically be like, "Yo, why'd you kill our senator?" He is waiting for them with a stack of papers that it is revealed to be the forced coercion. It is revealed to the audience is the forced coercion of the guys we got saw got rounded up in the jungle earlier. They're basically brought to a, a Venezuelan black site and be like, "You either die or you sign these papers." And then Hugo Chavez uh, hands them to Office Jim, and he's like. Yeah, well, this is our top priority. We have we have already caught the people in, responsible for this. Here are their confessions. And uh, you know, Office Jim is leaving the the room with the president and basically leans in and just literally to his face to the president of Venezuela says literally, "I know you did it," and then walks out. Uh, this episode ends with uh, Office Jack getting a. Uh, ambushed in his hotel room his ass beat by a uh, on-scene assailant until bunk who was reading the quran in his room i don't know if this came up for anybody else yeah no i didn't get yeah uh read, bunk is reading the quran uh uh recreationally in his room when he hears Jim quran being like, oh, classic. No. oh no what's going on and then goes in and breaks up this assassination attempt tries to chase this guy down has another heart perturbance and is unable to chase the assassin down and that's about it. I would give this episode a uh, three out of 10, mostly boring. The best thing about it was watching office Jim uh, ha- have a plastic bag put over his head, struggle for his own life and then stab a guy in the eye with a pen knife. Did okay. you feel that, you know, we were going to get, we were going to get like a treat. The audience is going to get a treat and they would kill off the Jack Ryan character and the rest of the season would be figuring out why Bunk was reading the Quran. Yes. <laughs> while honestly, not being Muslim. Honestly, I, I would wish that it took, I would hope that the, whoever did episode three will reveal that that happens in the beginning. And then the rest of this is just replaying season one of Homeland yeah, that, with Bunk as the, the, the you know, Quran. Right, that, that's how I would have done this show. I would have killed off the Jack Ryan character sort of in like a more ignominious way than that. Like yeah. he's, he like trips and falls. He's at, Buffalo Wild Wings, and he just swallows the bone <laughs> of a flat piece. You don't have to be Muslim to read the Quran, but, but, no, but, but it, it helps. helps. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> but everyone, but every, interestingly, everyone who reads the Quran becomes Muslim. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it's called the Quran Challenge. We take it every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I felt like I could mostly follow this without having seen the first one. Uh, the boat is full of something no good. Uh, Reyes, Reyes, Reyes ordered uh, the killing of the senator. Jack knows it in his heart, and the rest of it is up to put, getting all the spreadsheets together why to figure did he, it out. Why did he kill the senator? That's like the worst thing. He That's the dumbest thing he could have done. Uh, because they were getting too close to the boat. Yeah, They were finding, they were finding, they were finding out finding boat out, secrets. They were finding out about the boat, and they were going to take away his inflation button. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who did episode three? Uh, I think I think I did. I think it was... <laughs> I think it was the third episode. Why well, I, I watched a couple others a later too, so I, it's all kind of jumbled. So not a lot happens in the three in terms of uh, moving things forward. Uh, it's more scene setting. Uh, An office gym doesn't do much. It's really two big things that I remember. One is uh, uh, so uh, uh, Bunk Moreland 
in order to find out what's going on with the boat, gets a four-man black ops team to be snuck into the country and go into the jungle to do a recon. And the scene, and most of it is set up is that team coming together. And the, your point of view character is like the new guy. And he joins these other three guys as they're going there. And they do. Is, the, that, is that a black guy? It's a black dude. That's yeah. the guy who got recruited from, ta- from cleaning boats in Tampa. There you go. Episode. Yeah. So he gets recruited in with these other operators. And they're all waiting. And they're, they're saying, what's your call sign? Uh, I'm Coyote. And this is Disco. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the guy goes Black Mamba, and, and that's Kobe like, Bryant's call sign. Well, that was it. He goes, "Do you mean from uh, Kill Bill?" And he goes, "No, Kobe Bryant." And he goes, "No, that sucks." And he goes, "So you're a you're a boat guy? He he's from like the boat the boat secret service, like <laughs> the special <laughs> boat guys, the, the, uh, the clandestine arm of the Coast Guard, the guys who could murder you with a boat fifteen hundred <laughs> ways." And he goes, "Yeah." And he goes, "Well, that means you're a driver, so I'll call you Uber." And that's the banter. Is them calling him Uber That's and epic. him not happy about it. Spawn. Spawn con. <laughs> so it's Uber and Coyote and Disco and the one more guy uh, going into the woods and, and like reconning stuff. And then the other big thing is you spend some time with the, the good leftist lady running against Reyes. And it's her doing a campaign speech to a big crowd of racially diverse Venezuelans who are all on every, uh, hanging on every word and love her. And then another scene later on at her house with all of her cool urban friends, just like quoting Max Weber and drinking, <laughs> drinking wine. And there's a black dude playing uh, like a, a mandolin and they're all singing <laughs> very much just like, these are clearly the good people. <laughs> these are the nice people. Cause then there's, there's a scene with Reyes and his second in command where you know, he can see that he's kind of wobbling and he's like, maybe I don't want to be with this guy anymore. And I can't even remember what Office Jim did. He didn't do much. In my episode, uh, Reyes, while Office Jim is getting like a, 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 his bathhouse beat down in his bathroom, <laughs> bathhouse beat down. Uh, it's intercut with Reyes hosting a lavish palatial quinceanera for of his course. daughter where he's of like course. putting golden stilettos on her to signify that she's a woman while everybody in tuxedos and claps. they're just like like flushing plates of food down a toilet yes down a giant toilet he walks in he literally walks in and says remember when we were when we were turned 15 we ate rice and beans now and it's like a 15 tier wet cake behind him uh let's print some more money for my daughter's quinceanera <laughs> make everyone's lives worse my favorite thing to do <laughs> I mean, I think, actually, uh, there's in my a later episode- scene I, I read I watched ahead a little bit there's a later scene where he has one of those bad guy meet, meet like where he he grabs off the street for because they were snooping too close he grabs a, a bunk and off his gym and makes him meet him classic bad guy setup like I'm gonna take you to lunch and intimidate you and he takes him to uh, a polo field <laughs> where he's playing polo and then he gets off the the horse and he's like in his polo outfit and they're on a beautifully appointed uh, uh like uh, set up with tables and like fancy chafing dishes and he's like ah polo is the greatest game <laughs> but you cannot play it if you are poor <laughs> hello i'm president evil stupid pussy <laughs> so yeah that's that's it that's basically all right, all right, all right. there's guys in the jungle and the lady uh the le- liberal left the left wing opposition lady is doing well. She's speaking to people's concerns and they they, they want to be able she, to eat. She wants to give people, everyone in Venezuela, a tax refundable tax credit. She wants to give everybody a freedom dividend of 1000 hyperinflated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pass off that baton. All right. I am episode four. Our episode begins with uh, Jim is like, he has like a bunch of cork board he's using to explain how to prank Dwight. And uh, (laughs) like he's been, the camera shows that like he has a little cute little pillow in his conspiracy theory room. And uh, I, who I believe to be the cuck CIA guy, the guy who's like, we should go on a multiculturalism mission. You know, that guy, (laughs) the bald guy is like, Oh, I see you're sleeping in the office, and Jim goes, "Yeah, that's one of the perks of almost being murdered in a foreign country." And he just makes the sideways frown and sigh <laughs> as hard as he can. If I was killed, the CIA wouldn't even care. I guess it's just everyone wants me dead. <laughs> um, 
and there's just a bunch of boring talk. They talk about how what 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 was the? It's like in it was like in the MST3K Mitchell. That's what it felt like to me when they're like, "Oh, Gazara has got to call Galano." <laughs> like, it's just like ten minutes of that, <laughs> but it eventually result results into uh, that we find out that like a British PMC is guarding like super mines, and a bunch of b- boring stuff happens, and then. Reyes, because he's just like the shittiest, most cliched villain ever, goes to uh, Elizabeth Warren's house. <laughs> and he's just like, this is written by an algorithm because he does every fucking dumb bad guy thing. He like goes to her house and is like, oh, look, I know where you live. You know, oh, does it scare you that I came at night while your kids are here? And um, because he's stupid, he's like, Oh, uh, well, the you, the polls are wrong, but I'm gonna give you a job. I'm gonna stop the election by giving you a job in my government, which is makes him probably the shittiest negotiator negotiator ever. One wonders how this character became president or even like progressed from eating anything like rice and beans in his life, as he alluded to. Uh, he's like the Elizabeth Warren is just like. Well, okay, like if the, you were doing well in the polls, you wouldn't be offering me this. And he's like, How could she know? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. And then he just he he leaves and he's like, I think next time we come here we should bring fifteen instead of ten SUVs to scare her more. <laughs> She's nevertheless, she persists. It's really fucking annoying how <laughs> tough and brave she is. I did my smart my smartest negotiation tactic ever, walking around her house with my hands behind my back. <laughs> the scariest way to walk. The thing that intimidates any everyone. Anyway, uh so Jim goes to London and uh a character who, because I've only seen this episode, I assume is Teresa Heinz Carey. Uh <laughs> like when he goes in his room, Teresa Heinz Carey is in there pointing a gun at him and she he's like what what are you doing here? And she's like, well, actually, I feel like the same question, you know, like the typical, like, oh, who got the, dro-? it's like burn notice. This show is like burn notice because it's like, how'd you get the drop on me? Well, maybe you got the drop on yourself. Well, if I got the drop <laughs> on you, then, you know, maybe someone burned you. Who burned me? Did you burn me? No, I'm trying to look for the guy who burned me first. How am I going to find out who burned you when I don't know who burned me? If you got the drop on me, why don't we just both burn each other? That type of shit. They do that. They go on a spy walk around London. And I will give my first credit to the production team. Every British character in this is correctly hideous. <laughs> they look, every every Brit, every extra, every character with an English accent. True to my experience of going to the UK, they just look like when God made them. He was just like, I'll just like big lump of skin on this cheek. <laughs> sort of like give up on the amount of flesh on the face on when I'm making this cheek. The forehead can just be whatever shape and I'm just going to go crazy with the shape of the eyes. Um, anyway, so after several hideous scenes of like Teresa Hines, Carrie and Jim, you know, figuring out who burned them, uh, they meet some hideous British man who's like, who's going to help them by seizing the assets of the PMC. The, oh yeah, the PMC is called like a frescacus or something like one of the names that like an edgy PC gamer picks for himself before. Just to clear up any confusion, right? you mean private military contractor, not professional <laughs> manager? Yeah, right, 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 right. Oh right. fuck, I have <laughs> been confused. This whole time. Right, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan is posting screenshots in a completely indecipherable Twitter argument. Uh, so they end up like freezing the assets of Escagagus or whatever. And they go to the office. Teresa Heinz Carey, Jim, and this d- d- repulsive-looking British man. And they're like, "Oi, oh, 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 you bloody poof! Oh, you don't took my spendy Wendy's." <laughs> That's what they call money. <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Well, I reckon then that you find that you find you'll be six or six, seven then if you told us he hired you to guard the super mine." And they did just do that. It's it's done. Oh, yeah, there's like an assassin who I'm going to be honest. I tried watching this episode twice. It went right through me after they froze the assets. Like I couldn't really get what was happening because my brain just refused to take it in. My brain refused to absorb it. But 
There's some like German assassin guy who has that was probably Jacques and Hagar. Jacques and Hagar. He cross dressed to get back into Venezuela, uh, and he they they're doing like a dead drop to figure out who burned them. And Jack and Hagar kills the guy who's doing the dead drop and the PMC like, guy. Who, who, who burned you? Well, it was actually an incredibly sexy pile of dynamite that was a design. <laughs> this is dressed up to look very attractive yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, I took one note during this episode. Yeah, what, what was it? Um, it's just the name Max Jankum. I think I believed at one point there was a character named Max Jankum. I don't know who he is. Uh, I believe that's the girl with the dragon tattoos associate that she's oh, trying she, to track she, down. She, yeah. she, Max Jankum burned it's her. Max Hardcore burned her. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, she was in one of his videos. Uh, so yeah, Teresa Hines Carey was burned by Max Jankum, and I uh, Office Jim chases Jack and Hagar, and he escapes. And then at like the the end of the episode, I think there was a thing with Reyes, and he's like, of course, just sitting around. And he's like, let's burn more agents, and that's the end. So, like I, I like how this has gotten progressively like more and more incomprehensible. So very. <laughs> You know what? This is, this, is, this is actually like the office episode where uh, Michael has a movie day <laughs> and it's like and ask Kevin to recap the last 10 minutes of um, uh, Varsity Blues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't. Th so I had episode five and I couldn't follow any of this. <laughs> it was because the way people were posting about like you see the trailer and you see office gym like go to the aspen ideas conference and talk about <laughs> you know how the cia is uh, made up of heroes and you think okay this is going to be like crazy like in your face stupid shit and instead it was just plotting and boring uh, it starts off in the uk where I guess there's a shooting or something that takes right, place. Right, they, they killed the guy who burned Max Jankum. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, and so Office Jim goes to some house and like breaks into someone's study and is trying to crack into someone's uh, fucking computer. They, yeah. she, they, I'll tell you who they need is Master Codebreaker Kingston. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> no. He, so he's trying to crack into someone's computer to uh, get their nudes and leak them to the fappening or something. <laughs> and so he calls uh, CIA headquarters. He calls uh, Cheaty. It's Cheaty from The Good Place. And oh, he was in the first episode too. But yeah, he's just for one scene. Yeah, so they do like some banter that's like, hey, hey, Cheaty, you still cracking codes over there? <laughs> it's cool. Uh, and then Cheaty's like, oh, yeah, you got to break into an Apple computer. Uh, c call me on my personal line. Like, I don't, I guess you're not supposed to do that. You Wait, know? What? He's like, you know, don't call me on my office line. Call me on my like personal cell phone and I'll show you how to fucking crack into oh, an okay, Apple computer. Okay. Uh, because I guess that implies that you know Apple computers uh, have an encryption that they can actually break, but they're not supposed to do it. Mm. That's baffling. Okay. okay uh, then uh, Jack and Hagar, who I did not recognize was Jack and Hagar. Oh yeah, that was but him. he is. I thought he was just you know your average uh, business pervert. Uh, he's like a one-eyed German guy, and <laughs> yeah. very business pervert uh, demeanor, and he's interacting with some woman, and he's like you know told you to stay out of my way and, you know i won't warn you again something like that yeah. i don't know i don't know who this woman is probably the girl with the dragon tattoo i, I guess yes, so. it i was. never saw it, it i was. never saw those movies so it, I was, it was it was pass who, who i believe is who you think of as Teresa hines right, carry it's, it's oh right, okay yeah. yeah okay so he's like warns Teresa hines carry to stay out of his way because he's got a mission here yeah. uh and apparently the mission is to you know just to get off his gym uh okay so there's a b plot here maybe probably actually no this is more like a c plot that just cuts back to the venezuela election and like very little is happening in this whole venezuela thing we don't get to see uh the the dictator we just see uh the the uh elizabeth warren like give a speech yeah the second speech she gives is another just, it's just like another five minutes speech. of being like hey i want good things and not bad things and the audience going yes <laughs> finally Someone's going to throw away the inflation button. Thank you. <laughs> Turn uh, the big knob from inflation, inflation to deflation. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another scene that's just her at her campaign headquarters. And there's a map of Venezuela there where it's like the electoral college. And her advisor, uh, uh, she's talking to her advisor 
who says, I think you should go to these two cities. And she says, but we're behind in the polls in those two cities. And he's like, no, those polls are cut on social you're, no, that, that tells a that's different Funk story. That's Funk Moreland who told her that. Yeah, yeah. He who is a literally polls? CIA agent, and he's like hanging out and doing security for her. She doesn't know he's in the CIA. Oh, I thought he was her advisor. No, oh. no. She's like an informal, <laughs> he's an informal advisor who is actually a CIA agent, and it's supposed to be cool. Like, okay. oh, she doesn't know that he's, he, he's got the CIA in her corner. He's, he's pitching her on a, a bold new plan to outlaw eating zoo animals. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, so she's like yeah let's do it I'm gonna uh, go to these two cities and win their electoral votes or something yeah. and uh, I but that it just ends there and I guess that's gonna be followed up in the next episode that we'll never see because <laughs> <laughs> we're all forbidden from watching any more episodes no, I couldn't do that season. though I watched that ahead and I, I found out what happens at the end oh, okay alright all right. well don't, don't, don't you watch the whole thing don't, well, don't spoil it you can't no, no, no. You this need is to scene. know how this ends. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, let me, me finish. Let me finish. Okay, let me well, finish. Okay. Uh, okay, so that was like the C plot with Venezuela. Like very little Venezuela stuff. So the main thing is Jack and Hagar trying to kill Office Jim, and I guess the the woman like meets up with Office Jim and is like, you know, uh, and, and Jim's like, why did he let you live? And Teresa Hines carries like because he's in love with me. <laughs> and oh, he, but he like fucks a man in my episode. I forgot. Well, about he that told part. he sa- she says something like um, something like you know he told me that the first rule of being an assassin is never fall in love. But then he broke that rule by being in love. Why with would me. that be the first rule? I wouldn't think that would happen a lot. I don't know. The first rule of being an assassin is. <laughs> I don't know. I was back always get some of the money up front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, what, is that like a comment? Oh, just a classic case of an assassin falling in love with his target. <laughs> Happens literally every time. Okay, so she goes with Office Jim to the train and makes out with him on the train for Ooh. some reason, and then like I don't know to like hide him from Jack and Hagar. And she like leaves the train right as the doors close, so so Office Jim gets away. And then later, Jack and Hagar takes her to a car, and it's like, I warned you not to get in the way of my plans. And then shoots her and like takes her wallet, something like that. Oh, dude, he is gonna get such a nice train ticket with that wallet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so then, so then Office Jim, well, I'm not done. So then Office Jim goes to like Oxford University <laughs> to the library cool. where he like talks to this young woman and is like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Jim from that show. That, <laughs> you know, you're, you know, young you people, trying, you trying to fuck young people all like now. Uh, and she's like, can I see some IDs? Like, yeah, sure. And she's like, yeah, your dad, um, I need you to call your dad. Because her dad is Jack and Hagar, and tell him to stop doing assassin. <laughs> <laughs> That's else? the second what rule of being an assassin: is don't pick up a phone from a call from your daughter yeah. while you're on a job. What a and, pussy! Dude, and, and then so she stabs him with a penknife and runs out, and yeah. he like just runs after her, and everyone's like fine with this. Yeah, he pulls a gun on a on a student yeah, outside he pulls the a library, gun. and there's no one around being like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's like, you know, I know you think your dad is part of the good assassination guild, but he's actually become a bad assassin. <laughs> and Wait, is this actually the Assassin's Creed show? Did we <laughs> fuck up? Uh, yeah, that's about it. So what I got from my f- further looking into it. So no, the series ended. The guys in the jungle find a, a prison filled with political prisoners, including the candidate for president's husband who's been ah. missing for a year and has been disappeared in a, in a political prison. They also find that it's not weapons that were Russians were, were snuggling into Venezuela. It's mining equipment because the place that these mercs are guarding is a huge mine deposit for this, ca- uh, like, unobtainium metal used in... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Used in, uh, like, cell phones. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's what they were talking about. Right. Uh, I, I fucking... I blacked Iridium... This- I blacked this one out, but I guess that was the president of Venezuela talking about this with the CIA. I don't fucking know. But uh, yeah, it's some like, I think it's a made up thing. It's unobtainable. But uh, yeah, but uh, China has monopolized right. it. And oh, it's no. worth a trillion dollars. Yeah, it's worth a trillion this dollars. mineral can create inflation faster than previously <laughs> thought possible. So the mine, so because China's monopolized it, uh, you know, they get to set the prices and it's like the thing that's in all the electronic devices. So the mine in Venezuela is worth like a trillion dollars right. if it goes into operation right. because it breaks the China's monopoly. Right. And so what you find out over the course of the episode, over the course of the rest of the series, is that the president of Venezuela was in collusion with 
the this mining company that the British guy that Felix saw was in charge of, and also <laughs> this uh, this military contractors who are guarding it, but they have another uh, another unseen partner, another U.S. senator. Oh, it's a, a, there's Bernie Sanders. Evil, yes, there's an evil senator who is behind the scenes negotiate doing this w- and making a deal with Reyes so that they could is, have. Is he like an old droopy guy? Yeah. He, I think he he called Jack in my episode to be like, so sad what happened to Senator Jimmy. Right. If you need anything, yeah, call and he me. is, of course, behind the whole thing mm. because they want to create an alternative to Chinese on Obtanium. But like, they're willing to make a deal with the wait a evil second. Chavez wait a second. guy. If you're the CIA, wouldn't you be trying to break China's monopoly? Yeah, yeah. Monopoly? <laughs> you would. That would be your job. Your job would be you would yes. be on. You would be the one guarding the fucking thing and and running the political prison jail to keep people yeah. from finding out about it. Yeah, hundred percent. So J- Jack Ryan's like a terrible CIA agent. <laughs> yeah. He's not good at his job. Yeah, terrible. Uh, and they have the election. Uh, and uh, she wins. The the insurgent lady wins. He tries to cancel them. He tries to cancel the elections. After. By, like, old tweets. Yeah, tweets. digging up old tweets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the, are these rap lyrics? <laughs> no, but he, so he's going to lose. And so the president's like, oh, God, we're not having an election. But then, of course, there's a giant uh, uprising against him. And, one of the good ones. And the, and the, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. last yeah. scenes are... <laughs> Jack Ryan going into his office and putting a gun to his head. Reyes? Yes. <laughs> cool. You know, the classic, like, you piece of shit. And then, of course, he can't, you can't kill him. He can't, so he walks away. And then later on, you find out another from a piece Personal. of dialogue that he's been killed by the rioters. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's one of those good riots. Yeah. Yeah. So she yeah. becomes president, mm-hmm. and what, does the mine still go in operation? No, they actually, they shut down the unobtainium mine, and then China becomes the new global superpower. <laughs> the happy like, ending. Oh, no. <laughs> that's the happy ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wasn't that Reyes guy would be like, you fucking dumb shit. I was ending democracy and doing inflation in this country for you guys yeah. to stop China from taking over the world. Thanks a lot, asshole. Yeah. Literally, I was hitting, like, Bunk was telling me to hit that inflation button. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's like when a local cop busts a drug deal. It's like, you idiot, I'm DEA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been doing this case for two years. Maybe the show, maybe it's like the plot of the show is that Jack Ryan is, like, working for China. <laughs> That's, That's actually season pretty five. Cool, yeah, pretty cool. If it's show. revealed that he is a double agent, oh, and he's like the last episode of the fifth season. He opens his wallet and there's a picture of President G. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just looks yeah. down on it lovingly. So there you go. That's uh, that's Jack Ryan. Uh, I'd like to say what one thing about uh this show, uh, which is Amazon's presentation of 4K HD HDR looks like shit. That's too many Ks, too many resolution. Looks like a soap opera. It's just as bad that's, as the that's motion. That's hyperinflation yeah, right yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> stick, uh, 2Ks is enough for uh, drama television. Other yeah. Don't you want to see every fucking a moon crater uh, pour on someone's nose? No. I hate it. Look, like, Office Jam was not made for this resolution. Not at he all. He looks... So Polish when you actually see him in high <laughs> definition. He looks like an idiot. He looks like he's just walking around fixing toilets, but not right. Like he looks like a fucking dunce. <laughs> he's got he always had very big features. Yeah. yeah. And they they only get bigger as you age. And then with the five hundred Ks. His schnoz is a really out of this, out of control. Every time it goes in for a close up on him, I'm just like, yeah. ah, too much. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, you are very Polish, my friend. <laughs> wow, wow, good work. I didn't think we would get enough, yeah. but like that show, because like when I watched this show, I was like, this is so fucking boring. Like I was, I was actually, I came up with something while I was watching it where like the poli- the delineation politically between like types of media we have now is sort of perfect because. What is this but sort of like the Buttigieg, like sort of neocon consensus foreign policy, like sort of feel good center right liberalism. Literally produced by Amazon, right. the biggest company. Right. Yeah. Huge and, CIA and, contractor. And, and of course it's That's true too. It's boring and sucks. Like you look at it and you're like, I guess like some thought went into the production, but it just like you just feel nothing. It makes you well, like I said, and, it's like do. it's like Decker with a big budget. Right, right. It's like as meandering as any season well, of Decker. But because like it, because funny. it's like its ideology is collapsing on itself. It doesn't know what it's believed. Like it's just if you boil it down, it's just like outright fucking neocolonialism. But they dress it up and sort of like 
feel good identitarian politics but the result is just this contradictory mess it's incredibly dull and just makes you angry and bored and then you let's compare it to like one of the last things we watched like maga programming like we saw like that insane christian in the woods movie and it's like fucked up and like the message is like terrible and like it looks it looks like shit but you're like this is really this is like deeply funny this is deeply yeah. funny to watch. That is, that is the two types of media we get to have. Mm-hmm. And l- like you said about about the the, the Jack Ryan uh, point of view of, of that TV show, it's like now that we figured it out and like Matt has given us the final piece of this puzzle here, essentially the message of the show is that Venezuela has absolutely no right to sell their own natural resources on a global yeah, market. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Like that, that is the source of all their villainy. How dare you? And then also that they use private military contractors to guard uh, their uh, spoils. How dare you, sir? I mean, I think they were implying, well, oh, he's going to take all this money and, you know, not going to what? Do more polo play. Just take yeah, yeah. quinceañeras every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, so wait, so wait. So the, the idea is here is the CIA is going to has a problem with this guy because he's going to like take control of a natural resources and then like sell all the like use all the money to enrich himself and sell it to on a global market rather than redistribute it cuz like it, let's say the uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren character comes into office and she's like well I'm going to like nationalize the unobtainium mines <laughs> and use the uh, money to fund social programs Oh boy, hey Jack, here you we go again. <laughs> Jack, you and Max Jacob are going to work together to yeah. kill this woman. And then Bunk is like, oh shit. Yeah, here we go again. Yeah. I've, I'm, been, I've, I've had too many heart attacks for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, Jack Ryan, uh, I give it a, I give the Yeoman's two out of 10 stars. I, I assume that the out of all the episodes we watched, episode five, Virgil's, is the highest rated because it features a train. Uh <laughs> huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, you can't even, even train, get it up for the train. Even the train didn't do it for no, you. This is a very enervating experience. Yeah. Oh, uh, also, uh, if you're wondering what the hell happened to Jenkin Hadar, <laughs> <laughs> he gets Jack takes the daughter hostage and does an exchange where it's like, you tell me who hired you because he needed to confirm that it was Reyes. Uh, you tell me who hired you and I'll give you your daughter back. And the guy shows up and he's like, tell me who. It was Reyes, wasn't it? And he's like, no. <laughs> and he's like, tell me. And he's like, uh, I'm not going to tell you, bitch. And then he goes, he goes to kill him. And then Teresa Heinz Carey blows his brains out. She somehow got there, even though she had been shot twice uh, at yeah. the end of Virgil's yeah. episode she and was left me. in Germany or something. She got to England to exactly where they were and was there in time to, to shoot. Uh, the Why is Reyes assassin? trying to kill off his gym? Because he knows, he knows too knows much. Too much. He's he's Why? Because he's smart. Yeah, he reads yeah, the news. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He knows well, that, that Venezuela is bad. Yeah, we have to kill him. That is the other thing. Like, like that's the one thing you can't do is kill a CIA agent. Yeah, like, that's like, like, the one thing that gets you pretty much. Much less a senator, like a U.S. senator. We got a lot of those. I watched yeah. the. Uh, that's fine. No, like, like in my, because I like watched the previously on, like to see what happened in season one if it had any relationship to, and it really on the previous previously on sets it up that like. The thing about Jack Ryan that's special is that he's like a numbers and spreadsheet guy, and yeah. that is how he gets his information, but then he can also hold his shit in the field, and so that's the combo. Yes, yes. This, at least when I watch, he does zero anal- analysis. The guy, the Senator Jimmy gets assassinated, and immediately he's like, it's 100% Reyes. It is the the guy. Why is it the guy? He's bad. Why is it he bad? Because he's the guy. Yeah. And uh, it's, everything is immediately one one line to that. No spreadsheets. No numbers, no forensic accounting. Very bad. I would like uh, to see him do some math. I will point out that uh, that uh, CIA Jim's CIA nickname, according to Bunk Morland, is Bright Boy. <laughs> Bright dude, Boy. He's called Bright Boy because he has he has he's facts. So he has smart. so many facts, and he's so smart. The other thing I'll say is the the, the only pleasurable part about my episode was the scene where their SUV convoy gets just like fucking owned with fucking bombs and sniper rifles and then back, call back to uh clear and punishment danger yeah exactly no that that's the scene was very much a ripoff of the very great scene in clear and present danger where the cartels use rpgs to take out a cia convoy yeah that rule but the scene where the david senator david acevedo just gets like sunny corleone in the street by jock and sniper rifle man it just took me back to like 
the aughts when like John McCain and Lindsey Graham would rock around a market. And oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that was just like. Especially when you realize that the closest equivalent to uh, the Aceveda is uh, fucking Marco Rubio. Yeah. No. If, if this show was like, you did like a show about like you had the Aceveda guy would be perfect to play like the real Marco. And like have like the real Marco drama. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Is it a family families drama? <laughs> if you feel me, this is us. Yeah, no, you, 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 all you, of us. Yeah, <laughs> it's also funny that like okay, so assassination of a sitting senator. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the show's re- quote relationship to reality is. The assassination of a sitting senator in a foreign country, wouldn't the closest thing to that be that guy who got murked by the Jim Jones people? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, that was a yeah, yeah, congressman. Yeah, yeah. And, that, that, and that was like unprecedented. Yeah. Yes. It's never happened. Yeah. So really, if you want to get killed and you're a sitting representative, you got to go visit some crazy Americans no, living but like, somewhere if, else. If you're like yeah. the Maduro government or whatever, and like Marco Rubio comes and visits the country, they're like, Hell yeah! Let's let's kill this dude right he now. He knows too much about the boats. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck does a senator know about anything? Like- Senators are total morons. Their heads are completely empty, and they get a thing handed to them by a you staffer, put- and then they know that for as long as it takes them to read it, and then they don't remember it. The staffers have to put peanut butter in their mouth yeah. to make it look like they're talking. Yeah, um, senators senators are constantly have to be tricked into eating their heartworm medication. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, like, so just taking the show, like, like, like as a whole, uh, you know, a show about the CIA produced by Amazon, a CIA contractor starring, you know, uh, Office Jim, who's just recently been in the press talking about how much everyone should love and respect the CIA because of how heroic and apolitical they he's just are. So, he's just so happy to finally be able to give back to the CIA. Exactly. Did Office Jim also direct this? No. No, this is this is not even yeah no I know he is a director he did he did a, a quiet place yeah mm. he also did an adaptation of a book of David Foster Wallace short stories oh right I remember that Three portraits of hideous men right? yes yeah uh, it was the one time name for this uh, show <laughs> but, um, uh, no I mean just like overall though I think it was funny that this was like heavily promoted like months ago when it was just like you know Caracas they're gonna get a nuke we're not even gonna know because Washington will be a fucking crater by then. <laughs> You know, I, you know, you can read between the lines about like what I I'm just saying I, I want to believe what is going on here, which is this is just a pure press package by the CIA. And like the fact that the office and character is sort of like cool and funny and smart and is basically people to judge. Uh, obviously, what's going on hilariously, though. The Venezuelan thing just like died on the vine. Yeah. But like the show still came out in time for them to have another coup in Bolivia. So they should have just switched the names of the countries that they were. Yeah, just, just have them, yeah, like yeah. every time they mouth like women, they're going to say Venezuela. It yeah. turns into Bolivia just and like, the ADR. Like, we have to go to the presidential palace in La Paz. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is like, couldn't they make like more exciting propaganda? Well, it's I mean, so like, fucking boring. I think back to it's like the fucking. The entire, the entire show is like. But what were what were they doing guarding boats? Well, the boats aren't what they're guarding. The, what's on the boats is what they're guarding. But who do you know? How did the boat driver get burned? Well, you don't know who burned the boat driver. Oh, I have to go to London to find the boat driver. No, the boat driver is coming to Germany to find you. Well, I have to find him. Do you know Max Jankum? Like that's the entire show. <laughs> I mean, it's this terrible. is a good thing about that because, like, I think about like like an earlier era of like reactionary propaganda, which are like all the best '80s action movies, yeah. which are. Wonderful, but interestingly about those movies, even the most right wing of them, the CIA are still always the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. Or just yeah. always shown as just like these simpering, like backstabbing, like office. Like Murdoch and, and Rambo yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. They're they always they're the people who don't want us to win or are also secretly working with the bad guys. They're so, all just suit wearing pencil pushers. So like now What's the matter? CIA got you pushing glue on the pencils. <laughs> so like now that we have media that glorifies the CIA. It's exactly as boring as the people who work for it, you know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's only so much you can make interesting about that job. If you're not going to show the real cool stuff like going over Epstein blackmail videos and, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, making deals with the Sinaloa cartel and, and you know, the Golden Triangle. That stuff's interesting, but you never see that. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's Jack Ryan. Yeah. 